In this video, we're going to be looking at a common low level design coding question, which is to design an elevator system. So let's jump in. As always, we have the description on the left and the code on the right. So we'll start off with the description and then dive into the code later. Our job is to design a simple in-memory simulation of a bank of elevators serving a range of floors, processing hall and cabin requests in discrete time steps. So our job is to implement the following methods. Firstly, we have the elevator controller class. And so its constructor takes n, which is an integer, min floor, max floor, all integers. And so n represents the number of cars this elevator system serves. And then min floor and max floor are simply the min and maximum floors that these elevators service. The process request method takes a, an array of strings. And so our job is to parse each of them and they will come in the format of a type request that is the only type this system will need to handle but obviously in an interview you could easily extend it to support more types f represents the floor number and dir represents the direction and so we will repeatedly advance time until no elevator has pending requests the next method will be get elevator floor which will take an elevator id as a parameter and it will simply return the current floor of that elevator the get elevator state similarly will simply return the current state of the elevator and that will be either moving stopped or door open for the get elevator direction method similarly this will simply return the current travel direction of a car and this can either be up down or idle and so important notes here so request f dir so this is a string which is split by a space and request is simply the type f is the floor number and then the direction is either going to be up or down and our dispatch policy is nearest car and so each request is assigned to the elevator whose current floor is closest to that integer f time advances in discrete steps so these are units hidden inside process requests and doors open instantly so there's no real wait now if your interviewer wanted some timeout interval obviously you could add that if you wanted and so once all pending requests are served elevators are reset to having a direction of idle. So again, I think a really good way to understand it is just simply walk through an example. So for operations, we've got the elevator controller and here's the arguments being passed. We've got two, so this represents the number of elevator cars there are. Then one is the minimum floor and that's where the elevator cars will start on that floor one. And then the maximum floor here is in this case, floor 10. Then we'll call process requests. And again, like we said, this will be an array of strings, all of type requests for now. Then we'll have three, so this is the floor they're going to and then the direction up. And then we'll simply get the floor, state and direction of elevator one. And now we'll look at the explanation to make sense of the output. So we call ele elevator controller. So we create two cars and they both start at floor one. So that returns null. Then we call process requests. As we saw, we've got request three up first. And so car zero is close to it. So we'll simply assign that to three. Then we'll assign seven to car one and then five to car zero and run until all are served. And so car zero will move from one to three to five and car one will move from one to seven. And so both end at stopped and in an idle state and that simply returns null so then for get elevator floor of car with an id of one that's now at level five and then to get its state it's now stopped and then direction is idle so hopefully that makes sense but once we walk through the code it should be crystal clear how everything works so at the top we've got the direction enum so this is for possible travel directions of an elevator car then we have the elevator state enum so this is obviously used for the elevator's operating state then we are going to create a request class and so this is a simple container holding a requested floor and optionally the whole call direction, which is useful for scheduling, which we'll see in a second. Next, we're going to create an elevator class. And so in the constructor, we'll hold all the variables needed. And so we've got an EID representing the elevator ID. We've got min and max floor. So these are the building limits. We've got the current floor. So this starts at the lowest floor. We've got the state. So it starts in the stop state. Direction similarly will start in the idle state. Then we have requests. So this is an empty list, but we'll subsequently hold all the request objects. And we also have a lock. Uh, so this is a threading lock to guard against state changes. Not strictly necessary, but again, if you want to show off to your interviewer, it's a great way to do that. Then we have the add request method. And so this will firstly acquire the lock and then we'll append the new request to the requests array. And so it resorts itself by absolute distance from the car's current position, giving it that closest first priority scheduling, which was required in the requirements. So the next method is the step method, and this is a one tick state machine. And so what it does, it performs a single time step for this elevator. And so if there are no pending requests, we set the state to stopped the direction to idle and then we exit if there are requests what we'll do is we'll create a target so this is the floor of the first queued request after sorting because again we want to go to that closest floor then if the target is above current we set direction to up and we move the car up one floor and mark it as move if the target is below the current floor we set direction to down move the car down one floor and again mark it as moving otherwise we're already at the target and then so what we can do is call an internal open doors method and remove that 
that request and then reset the direction to idle if the queue is now empty and then return. So in the internal open doors method, all this does is sets the state to door open, then immediately to stopped. And so a real system would wait, but here it's instantaneous. But obviously if your interviewer wanted something different, you can encapsulate it in this method here. And lastly, we have our elevator controller class. So in the constructor, we create a list of elevator instances from ID zero to number of elevators minus one. And then it creates its own lock as well to protect multi-car scheduling decisions. Then we're going to create a request elevator method. Again, we get the lock from the controller. We then choose the elevator whose car is currently closest. Again, the absolute floor distance. And then we delegate that request to the elevator via the add request method and passing in the request. The next method is step all, and this simply calls step on each of the elevators. Now we have got our process requests method. And again, this will iterate over the command strings like request five up. So it'll split it by spaces. So if the first token is request, again, we're only supporting request, but we can extend it to support other tokens. We parse the floor number, and then we convert the third token to a direction enum. We then wrap it into a request and pass it to the request elevator method. Then after reading all commands, we will loop over the step all repeatedly until every elevator queue is empty. Get elevator floor simply returns the current floor of the elevator with the given ID. Get elevator state returns the state of that elevator and get elevator direction simply returns the current travel direction. So in short, request elevator assigns a new hall call to the car closest to the requested floor, then hands the job to the car's add request method. Add request appends the call and resorts the queue by absolute distance from the car's current floor so that the next stop is always the nearest. The step method is a one tick state machine. It moves one floor towards the next target or if already there it switches to the open doors internal method it then pops the serve request and resets the direction when the queue empties open door instantly toggles door open and to stopped uh, and is a placeholder for real timing step all in the controller just iterates on the step over every car letting each run autonomously again we've got thread safety with our locks and again our design clearly separates scheduling in the controller from movement logic in the elevator making the system easy to extend you know for example by swapping in a smarter assignment strategy or adding real-time door timers. And what we're showing to our interviewer here is that we know the fundamentals such that we can add easy to maintain code for production systems. So let's run the tests and see if it passes. Perfect, the test pass. Let's run the test suite and see if all the tests pass. Perfect, all the tests passed. So if you wanna check out the time and space complexity, that's in the solution tab. And if you wanna try a question, the link is in the description. So hopefully you got some value out of this. If you did, please like and subscribe. It helps the channel out a lot and share it with a friend. And hopefully I will see you in the next one.